Hello guys, you are welcome to this class. Last class we talked about bones. So today we're going to have a look at bone constraints. When we talk about bones, we have two major kinds of bone controls. We have IK, which is inverse kinematics, and then we have FK, which is forward kinematics. By default, Moho gives you IK. So that means that when you have a bone chain like this, and when I move a part of that chain, it moves the other part of the chain as well. Okay? So this is the chain, this is the chain, and you see that these parts move together. Whereas FK means only the bone moves in the chain. So to use FK, I would hold the alternate key on my windows, and then I click, and you see this is FK. This moves only just that bone. Alright? So in our animation, we can actually have bone constraints. Bone constraints will help us better fine tune our bones to give it a limit. So let's say for example, I want my head layer to be, I don't want my head layer to move more than this angle. So I could set a bone constraint for that. Select your bone with the select bone tool and then go to bone constraints. And then you'd see we have options like angle constraints and that makes sure that the bone has this angle I could adjust the angle from here so when that bone gets moved it's not going to pass this angle constraint okay so that's what bone constraints or particularly angle constraints are used for I could adjust the angle Maybe more like this and really give it you know um, something that I really like all right so next up we have independent angle independent angle is um, quite particular use case but I think for now it's not so useful but it simply means that when you have a bone in a bone chain and I move the parent bone that bone angle is going to remain the way it is um, it's not going to be rotated based on the parent bone. Um, we'll try that later on. So um, let's see what we have next. We also have squash and stretch scaling. And this is quite interesting because what this tool does is that um, let's say I have these two bones. I select them and then I enable squash and stretch scaling. Okay, so what that could actually do for us is that when I try to animate my character, for example, let's say, so when I scale the bone with the transform bone tool, the layers actually get deformed. So you see it stretches and squashes, which is quite cool. So that's what that tool does. Let's delete all the keyframes. Let's see our next constraint. And then we have target. So I'll show you what this does. Target is useful for things like legs. So I'll create a new bone. I will make sure I have no bone selected before I draw my bone. Because I want the target to have no parent, so I'm going to draw this and then I'll hold alternate, click this so there's no um, parent. And then I do for the next one. So, how target works is that if I select, let's say, this bone, let's look at the name of this bone, which is called B13, and it should be called B14. Okay, so for this bone. I can come here and target B13 and this will target B14 okay. so what that does is that when I move my rig let's also make sure we disable the bone strength 
before we do that so now the legs stay in place so when my character moves the leg stays in place until I move the bones themselves okay or use um, FK on some bones so that's a very cool feature all right let's see what we have next we have some other options for control bones and arc solver um, we're going to ignore this for now because we're going to go back here and talk about this this is more for advanced um, controls um, but let's look at the next option which is bone dynamics which is very very interesting i'll show you how that works so let's use our sword so i'm going to enable my sword layer because i want to rig this character um, asset using the bone dynamics um, so let's draw a quick bone for the sword and you could see that if i check my brain bone tool this bone is a child of this bone okay so actually if you want to change the child of a bone or a parent of a bone with your reparent tool selected you could um, just click any layer or any bone and that's going to change the bones parent but I want this okay so that's correct so now let's explore what this tool does so I'm going to select these two bones and then I go to bone constraints and I enable the bone dynamics or the options okay so when I animate my bone let's say this is gonna be here and then maybe it comes like this let's use FK okay so you see what happens you see the bones they wiggle and that's what bone dynamics does it wiggles your bones automatically and you can adjust the um, wiggle strength from this option you could adjust the spring damping the weight you can fine tune it to get um, you know a better result but these are things that you have to explore and um, to see what works best for your scene so that's how bone dynamics work a more fun way we could actually try is let's delete all our keyframes I'm going to have new bones and show you an even more interesting way of doing this so let's use this up as our parent and then I'll draw multiple bones for the sword let's make sure we go back to frame 0 so let's draw this and this this okay so we have this so I'm going to select all these bones and then I go to bone dynamics enable all these options so now watch what happens let's say the beginning has this as our first frame and then here maybe it comes like this and maybe at this point it comes like this let's make sure we adjust that correctly See, it's a little bit um, touchy so maybe I'll use my FK by my holding alternate key to adjust this value all right so we have this now check what happens pretty cool right I could even adjust the values of this I could even hold maybe this frame for some seconds so let's see what happens now I have a cool sword that is very very rubbery cool so you see we have a lot of control for our animation maybe let's even try to move this guy here and maybe 
um, at this point um, this one goes down like so. so let's see how that looks like and you can see this very nice action of the sword bouncing was done for us automatically with the bone dynamics so really a lot of fun tools you could play around with and yeah i'm sure you have a lot of fun with this sometimes you see it messes up from the beginning but that's just um, a very small glitch when you run out your animation it's not, not, it's not going to show so just start from frame one and then press play okay so a lot of fun a lot of um, nice action this was all gotten from the bone dynamics so there is a lot to be explored of course adjust your settings to give you a, a different feel of your sword okay uh, maybe you want to adjust some of these options like the weight of the position or the angle maybe I want it to be um, sort of stronger like so you know I mean there is a lot of things we can actually adjust yeah and I'm sure that was fun so in our next class we're going to talk about smart bones which is a very powerful feature in Moho for creating more advanced rigs so I'll see you then